welcome to science era in this video we're going to discuss cell division mitosis so the learning objective for today's lesson will be first we're going to see a dna replication and the process of mitosis why mitotic cell division is important for us then we're going to describe the role of DNA and RNA, three major varieties of RNA in protein synthesis and the process of protein synthesis. Let's begin. From the time a cell is produced until it divides, it goes through a sequence of changes called the cell life cycle. The cell cycle is divided into two parts, interphase during which the cell develops and performs its normal metabolic function and cell division during which the cell reproduces itself. Although the term interphase may give the impression that it is just a period of rest between cell division phase, this is not the case. The cell is particularly busy and ready for the cell division during the interphase. This is by far the longest phase of the cell cycle. As you can see in the diagram, interphase is further divided into three or four parts, G0, G1, S phase, G2. These are all the parts of interphase. Then we have mitosis and then uh, cytokinesis. In G1, cellular contents excluding the chromosomes are duplicated. In S phase, each of the 46 chromosomes is duplicated by the cell. In G2 phase, the cell double checks the duplicated chromosomes for the error, making any need for repair. Then it goes to the mitosis phase. Interphase is more accurately referred to as a metabolic phase. Preparation for DNA replication. The function of cell division is to produce more cells for growth and repair processes. The DNA molecule genetic material is duplicated exactly in the process of DNA replication. This occurs towards the end of the interphase. The process begins as the DNA helix unzips, gradually separating into its two nucleotide chains. Each nucleotide strand then serves as a template or a set of instructions for building a new nucleotide strand. The result is two DNA molecules that are identical to the original DNA helix, each consisting of one old and one newly assembled nucleotide strand. As we know, uh, the pair of uh, nucleotides in the DNA, adenine always pairs with thymine and guanine always pairs with cytosine. So it stands for uh, abbreviated as ATCG to remember the pairing of nucleotides in the DNA. Mitosis. Mitosis is the process of dividing a nucleus into two daughter nuclei with exactly the same gene as the mother nucleus. When the nucleus divide, each daughter nucleus ends up with the exactly same genetic information as the original mother cell. So the phases of uh, mitosis include interphase, prophase, anaphase, metaphase, telophase and then cytokinesis. We are going to look at each phase in detail just now. In order to remember the name or the sequence of these phase, the best mnemonic you can use is IPMAT. I for interface, P for prophase, M for metaphase, A for anaphase, and T for telophase. And then we have cytokinesis. Let's look at prophase. Prophase is when a cell divides the chromatin thread coils and shortened, revealing the bar-like chromosome under a microscope. Each chromosome is made up of two identical strands called sister chromatids, which are kept together by a little button-like structure called the centromere because DNA has already been 
copied. Separating from one another, the centriole begins to travel towards the opposite side of the cell, directing the formation of mitotic spindle between them. During the final phase of mitosis, the spindle serve as the scaffold for the attachment and movement of the chromosomes. The nuclear envelopes, the nuclei, nucleoli, have broken down and briefly vanished by the end of the prophase and the chromosome have randomly attached themselves to the spindle fiber by their centromeres. Then we have metaphase. Metaphase in this short stage, the chromosome line up at the metaplate, the center of the spindle midway between the centrioles so that a straight line of chromosome is seen. During the inner phase, the centromeres that have held the chromatids together splits. The chromatids, now called chromosomes again, begins to move slowly apart, drawn towards the opposite end of the cell. The chromosomes seem to be pulled by their half centromere with their arms dangling behind them. This careful division of sister chromatid ensures that each daughter cell gets one copy of every chromosome. Anaphase is over when the chromosomes stop moving. Then the, we have telophase. Telophase is essentially prophase in reverse. So what hap whatever happens in prophase, you have to just reverse it in the telophase. Chromosome at the opposite end of the cell uncoil to become thread-like chromatin again. Spindle break down and disappear. A nuclear envelope forms around each chromatin mass and nucleoli appear in each of the daughter nuclei. Last stage is cytokinesis or cytoplasm division. Occurs during the late anaphase and is completed during the stelophase. Cyto means cytoplasm and kinesis means division. So cytokinesis is the division of cytoplasm. A cleavage furrow is formed over the midline of the spindle by a contractile ring comprised of microfilaments which squeezes or pinches the original cytoplasmic mass into two halves. As a result, two daughter cells exist at the end of the cell division. Each is smaller and has less cytoplasm than the mother cell, but they are genetically identical. The daughter cell continues to grow and carry out normal cell function until it is their turn to divide. Then this leads us to the interface again and the whole cell cycle begins. So mitosis have five different phases, interface, prophase which is divided into two stages early prophase and the late prophase then we have metaphase anaphase and telophase and in the end division of cytoplasm is known as cytokinesis then moving on to protein synthesis Fibrous structural protein are the major building material for the cells. Other proteins, globular functional proteins, perform the functional role in the body. Genes, the blueprint of the protein structure. Gene is defined as a DNA segment that carries the information for building one protein. DNA's information is encoded in the sequence of bases. Each sequence of three bases a triplet calls for a particular amino acid. For example, a DNA base sequence of triple A specifies an amino acid called phenylalanine. And then a DNA base sequence with a CCT calls for glycine. Next is the role of RNA. During interface, most ribosome which are the site of protein synthesis are in cytoplasm, although DNA never leaves the nucleus. 
not only does DNA need a decoder, but it also needs a reliable messenger to get instruction for creating proteins to the ribosome. A second type of nucleic acid, which is RNA, perform these messenger and decoder tasks. So RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. RNA varies from DNA in that it is single-stranded has ribose sugar rather than DX, deoxyribose and has uracil base rather than thiamine. Three different types of RNA, ribosomal RNA, messenger RNA and transfer RNA. Ribosomal RNA aids in the formation of ribosome which are the building blocks of proteins. Then we have messenger RNA. It is a type of single-stranded RNA that looks like a half of a DNA molecule. They transport the message holding protein synthesis instruction from the nucleus, DNA or gene to the cytoplasm's ribosomes. tRNA or transfer RNA molecules are tight little clover field shaped molecules that transport amino acid to the ribosome process of protein synthesis protein synthesis involves two major phases transcription when complementary mrna is made using the information in dna gene and translation when the information carried in mrna molecule is decoded and translated by nucleic acid into protein so in this you, uh, diagram, you can see that protein synthesis are given in five steps. Step number one is mRNA specifying one polypeptide is made from the gene on the DNA template by an enzyme. Number two, mRNA leaves nucleus and attaches to the ribosome and translation begins. Then incoming tRNA recognize a complementary mRNA codon calling for its amino acid by temporarily binding an, its anticodon to the codon. Number four is as the ribosome move along the mRNA, a new amino acid is added to the growing protein chain. Number five, last step, released tRNA re-enters the cytoplasmic pool ready to be recharged with a new amino acid. So these were the processes of protein synthesis. So this brings us to the end of cell division where we looked at mitosis and then we saw protein synthesis. In the next lesson, we are going to discuss body tissue such as epithelium, connective, muscle tissue, nervous tissue and tissue repair. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe for more.